Hey YouTube, it's Zoe, and it is also now December, so autumn is slowly turning into winter, and to celebrate this momentous occasion of the seasons changing, I don't know, I thought I would share with you all the books that I have purchased in the last few months of autumn. I have more than 30 books to haul today. It has been a stressful semester, okay, and when I am stressed, I buy books, and when I have 10 projects and exams overlapping with one another, I am very stressed. And so I buy a lot of books. Most of these books are actually spooky scary books because I, being the crazy college student that I am, stayed home on Halloween and watched Hocus Pocus and browsed for books online. Anyway, enough chit chat. Let's get into the haul. The first book I have to share was actually sent to me by Tor Books, who is also sponsoring this video, so thank you so much. This is American Drifter by Heather Graham and Chad Michael Murray. Yes, that Chad Michael Murray. That Chad Michael Murray. It was also the November book of the month for Fiction Faction, a book club I am in with Natasha from Toshopolis, Hannah from A Clockwork Reader, and Maureen from Maureen Keevy. American Drifter follows a US Army veteran named River who is suffering from PTSD. To distract himself, he decides to take a trip to Brazil, where he soon falls in love with a local journalist. Things take a turn for the worst, as they are prone to do in novels, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but let me just say there is murder involved. So it's part mystery, part adventure, and part romance. I actually already read this, and I'm going to let you know what I think about the book in my next reading wrap up and the live show that Fiction Faction is going to have in the next couple of days over on Natasha's channel. Now onto all of the spooky scary books. The first one is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. It is set in the late 1800s in England back when Jack the Ripper was at his prime and it follows a 17 year old Lord's daughter who secretly practices forensics. I don't know too much else about this book but I am guessing that she she stalks Jack the Ripper. <laughs> it is a murder mystery and a historical fiction novel, two of my favorite genres, and it follows Jack the Ripper, who I got really into when I was studying abroad in London, and it's set in London, so all of my favorite things wrapped up into one book. I have high expectations for this. We then have The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This is actually a repurchase for me because I was once upon a time very into having minimalistic shelves, so I got rid of almost all of my unread books, including this one, and I now regret that decision because I had to buy this book twice. I have since come to terms with the fact that I am not a minimalistic shelves type of person, Anyway, I was recommended this book by a ton of people, including some of my very best friends, so I had to check this out. Also, it is a historical fiction novel, and I just said how much I love historical fiction. It is also a fantasy that follows two magicians and a mysterious circus that is only open at night. We then have a proper thriller book, The Girl in 6E by A.R. Tor. This follows a woman who works as... I think you call them cam girls. She performs sexual things on the internet. Anyway, she has not left her apartment in three years because she is having intense homicidal thoughts and she knows that the second she leaves, she will kill someone. Soon she learns that someone is in danger and she is the only one who can save them. But that means leaving her apartment. Dun dun dun. Next is Night Film by Marisha Pessel, another murder mystery thriller. This follows a journalist who is looking into the suspicious death of a young woman who is the daughter of a cult horror filmmaker. It is said that her death was ruled a suicide, but he suspects otherwise. I have heard amazing things about this from Sarah from Sarah Without an H, so that's basically the only reason why I picked it up. Then I have Anya's Ghost by Vera Brosgul, a spooky graphic novel. This follows Anya, who is just walking along when one day she falls into a well. Down in the well, she spots a skeleton and its ghost who starts to haunt her and then madness ensues. Now we have The Diviners by Libba Bray. It's another spooky historical fiction novel. It's set in the 1920s in New York City and it deals with the occult and supernatural powers. So that sounds like the best combination of things. Also, there is a murderer. And you know how I feel about murder in books. It's good, by the way. I like murder in books, but not murder in real life. 
okay? Let's keep that straight. The next two books, I honestly have no idea what they're about. I was just browsing on Amazon while watching Hocus Pocus and they caught my attention. So I got Bird Box by Josh Mellerman and The Ballad of Black Tom by Victor Laval. Something is out there, something terrifying that must not be seen. So the main character is trapped in her house with her two young children and she cannot leave and she cannot see who is out there, who is murdering people, it seems. The Ballad of Black Tom also is set in New York and it deals with the occult and sorceresses. The main character is black and he plays the guitar and he goes to New York. That's all the back says. Then we have A Madness So Discreet by Mindy McInnes. This is another historical fiction slash thriller novel. The main character in this, Grace, is certifiably insane and she is put into a Boston insane asylum where she is just forgotten about. But she is also incredibly smart and one day this doctor comes, sees her, and realizes how smart she is. Then she gets to help out on crime scenes and hunts murderers. I don't know what the sequence of events are. Next we have You by Caroline Kepnes, which I have heard nothing but amazing things about, both on booktube and off booktube. Just people that I happen across in the world have recommended this book to me. This is written from the perspective of a stalker, but it is also written in second person. So it's like we are the person that the stalker is obsessed with. I'm guessing he has violent thoughts towards the person he is stalking, so it's almost like he has violent thoughts towards us and it all freaks me out. I then purchased three Neil Gaiman books, Coraline, The Graveyard Book, and The Ocean at the End of the Lane. I haven't read any Neil Gaiman before so I don't know why I purchased three of his books at one time. I was just really in the mood to read his books and then I saw that these beautiful UK paperback versions were on Book Depository for relatively cheap and free shipping. So I thought, why not? Why not do it? So I did it, and I don't regret it. I did see the animated movie Coraline, and it scared me with the button eyes, and I don't really remember too much else. I just remember the button eyes, and that freaked me out. But I also liked it. Freaked me out and fascinated me. That's how it goes. I like having nightmares. Coraline follows a girl named Coraline who moves into a new house with her family and she comes across this old door in a random room which connects her to this other world, this alternate universe where things seem to be better. But are they? Are they? No, they're not. There are button eyes. <sighs> the graveyard book follows a boy named Bod. Bod? His name is Bod. Does he have a great Bod? <laughs> but Bod lives in a graveyard and was raised and educated by ghosts. The Ocean at the End of the Lane follows a middle-aged man who returns to his childhood home to attend a funeral. And when he is there, the past comes flooding back, but it's not exactly the way he remembered it. All of these books sound really good, and I want to read them immediately. But I keep saying that about all of these books. That's why I buy these books because I want to read them, obviously. Then I was sent this massive box by Novel. This is their spooky box. So it was for Halloween, but I am just now making this book haul. Ooh, I love cutting up boxes. I think I've got it open. What's in here? Can you see? Ooh, ooh, there's a lot in here. Oh my gosh, thank you. First I see this awesome tote bag. There are so many books in here. The first one is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black, the first in a series, and because it's Holly Black, I'm guessing there are fairies in it, but I love fairies, both the fae and little tiny pixies, so I am on board with this. The next book in the box is The Hearts We Sold by Emily Lloyd-Jones. This is set in a world in which there are demons and the main character sells her heart in exchange for a wish. But obviously she ends up wanting her heart back so she's trying to outwit the demon. Then in the box we have Night of Cake and Puppets by Lainey Taylor. This is a companion to the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. I have only read the first book in the trilogy but I have been meaning to read the rest of it and there are illustrations in here I love illustrations but I can't read it because I haven't read all of the series but I want to read it because there are illustrations maybe this will be my reward at the end of reading all of the daughter of smoke and bones books what is this <gasps> hold on hold up yes yes Whoa! In the 
box we also have Devils and Thieves by Jennifer Rush. The main character in this is a magic user, but she cannot use magic without falling apart, and she has to eventually team up with a motorcycle gang to solve a mystery? A very odd combination that I think could work. Next in the box is And the Trees Crept In by Dawn Kurtigich. The main character moves to her aunt's manor, which turns out to be haunted. The trees can move, and the cherry on top of all of that is that there is a creepy man in the basement who has no eyes. Second to last in the box, I Crawl Through It by A.S. King. I have heard amazing things about A.S. King, but I've never read any of her books for some reason. This follows four teenagers in high school who are all incredibly stressed and tense and on the verge of exploding. Apparently there is a bomb threat that happens, so I guess they are pushed to the breaking point. The last book in the box, but not the last book in this book haul. We still have quite a ways to go, but we have The Dead House by Dawn Kurtigich, the same author as the other book we just talked about. It says that there are three students dead and one student missing, and it is all told in files. Different newspapers, a report statement, and there is a diary entry. So that is the end of these spooky books. Now on to some more light-hearted-ish books. First is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. I got a signed copy because apparently he was in my bookstore the day before signing all of the copies. So I was very lucky. <laughs> this is about a teenage main character named Aza who has OCD and intrusive thoughts and it follows her struggle with that, her struggle to get better, and also she is searching for a missing billionaire. I absolutely loved this book. This was a very honest depiction of mental illness. John Green himself struggles with OCD. Definitely my favorite John Green book ever. Next is The Hobbit by J.R. Tolkien. This was the ostentatious book for September and October, I believe. So of course I had to get the prettiest edition I could find. There are maps and illustrations. Oh my goodness. Then I got Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. This follows a high school senior named Eliza who doesn't have any friends at school. She has anxiety, but at home. She is the anonymous creator of this wildly popular webcomic named Monstrous Sea, and one day a new kid comes to school who just so happens to be the most famous fanfiction writer for her webcomic. It's really cute, but it does delve into some darker themes. Also, there are illustrations in this. Since she is a webcomic developer, she is an artist and it's really cool. It's like there is another story within a story. And I really like the other story. Monstrous Sea is pretty darn cool. I was then sent a book by Bloomsbury, which is Piecing Me Together by Renee Watson. This follows a black teenager named Jade who feels like she has to get out of her poor neighborhood in order to succeed. It follows her efforts to succeed, and it also focuses on issues such as race, privilege, and relationships. I love the cover, and I think it sounds really interesting. Then I have When Dimple Met Rishi by Cindy Manon. This follows an Indian American teen named Dimple whose parents have suggested a relationship with a boy named Rishi. She is more rebellious while he is more of a cute hopeless romantic and they both end up at the same summer camp for web developers and I'm guessing they fall in love. It sounds like a perfect cheesy summery contemporary romance book which I am all about. We then have Tosh Hearts Tolstoy by Katherine Ormsby which follows a main character named Natasha who creates a web series that is an adaptation of Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. She and her web series are soon thrust into the limelight and she starts an online flirtation with a boy. She also happens to be asexual which I think is fantastic because I don't know if I've read many or any books with a main character who is asexual. Next is Saga Volume 2 by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. I read Volume 1 back during the summer and I really enjoyed it. It is a very unique and engaging story. It is a sci-fi, fantasy, adventure, romance, graphic novel. Then I went to Books A Million one day when I was procrastinating doing my homework. 
as you do. And I picked up two books. The first one is Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. This is soon to be a major motion picture, so I knew I had to pick it up. This is about three crazy rich Chinese families and the gossiping and scheming that occurs when the heir to one of the families brings home his girlfriend, who is Chinese, but was born in America. This is supposed to be quite a wild and hilarious book. The second book I bought was British Manor. <laughs> British Banner Murder by Leslie Meyer. I went into the store with the sole goal of finding the wackiest and cheesiest murder mystery book I could find, and this was the winner. I really have no idea what it's about, except that it's set in England, and there are corgis, and also I'm guessing a manor and a murder. Actually, when I was checking out, the cashier told me that he had read this book and he thought it was wonderfully cheesy, which is the best thing I could hear. I can't tell you why I love cheesy murder mystery books. I can just tell you that I do. So if you have any recommendations for trash mysteries, send them my way. I then purchased the entire box set of The Heroes of Olympus by Rick Riordan. The books are The Lost Hero, The Son of Neptune, The Mark of Athena, The House of Hades, and The Blood of Olympus. Like The Night Circus, which I hauled earlier, I actually did own the first couple of books, but I unhauled them when I was trying to become minimalistic. That obviously backfired because I ended up getting in the mood to finally finish the series. My dad has actually read all of Rick Riordan's books and I've been meaning to get caught up so I can finally talk to him about the books. So this is step one in achieving that goal achieving that dream. The second to last book I have to haul is Nevermore The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. I've been meaning to read more middle grade as that is a genre that I don't really explore and I want to read widely. I want to read from all the genres. So when I saw Monica from She Might Be Monica raving about this book on Twitter, I knew I had to pick it up. Also on Goodreads, this book has a 4.5 out of 5 star rating which is the highest rating I think I've ever seen on Goodreads, so I am expecting good things. This is about a girl named Morgan Crow who was born on the unluckiest day, and because of that, she is blamed for everything that goes wrong in her town. Also, on top of that, she is supposed to die at midnight on her 11th birthday, but instead of that, she is whisked away to this magical secret city called Nevermore. She also has to complete dangerous tasks in order to join a prestigious organization, and all in all, this sounds like exactly what I'm looking for in a middle grade novel. Also, it has a 4.5 out of 5 on Goodreads. How is that possible? Finally, I traveled to Minnesota during Thanksgiving to see my family, and while I was there, I went into a Barnes & Noble, obviously, and I'm so glad I did, because I found a hidden gem. Manga? Pride and Prejudice. What? It is all of Jane Austen's words, and mixed in, there are little manga illustrations. I know! Are your minds blown like mine is right now? <laughs> it's so cool! It's the most random thing I could find. I was just walking around Barnes & Noble. I looked down. It was on the bottom shelf. This was the only copy how did I find it? It was, it was drawn to me. That's what happened. We were meant to be. It's all the Bennett sisters. I'm dying. This is so great. I wish all of them were colored. <gasps> I already have 50,000 copies of Pride and Prejudice, but you understand that I needed just one more. Now I just need an anime of Pride and Prejudice and my life will be complete. So that is the end of this unexpectedly massive autumn book haul. Thank you so much for sticking around this far into the video because it was a long one. Also, please leave down below which book you think I should read first because, like always, I want to read all of these books all at once. I don't know how realistic that is, so leave down below your favorites. I want to read this, but I should not because I just read Pride and Prejudice a couple of months ago. Thank you all so much for watching. I love all of you, and I'll talk to you all soon in my next video. Bye!